Well, I've had to take the panniers off for this job. I'm going to remove the rear wheel, um, change the rear sprocket for a slightly larger one, and while I'm there, while the wheel's off, I'm going to clean out the brake drum, uh, take any glazing off the pads. Um, so, the first thing I've done is wind back the adjuster to give me enough room to see if I can do this one hand, probably not. I need to push that lever in and <laughs> move that to the side. Not easy with one hand, I'll have to uh, do it after. So, that needs to come off there. This needs removing this uh, anchor bolt for the brake. Um, without wishing to state the obvious, I'll need to undo the gears and yeah, remove the chain guide, which is a matter of four screws. Just all comes apart quite easily. And then, in theory, I should be able to remove standard 50mm um, spanner on the wheel nuts. I should be able to remove the rear wheel clean everything up and do what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, chain guard's off. Chain's gone slack again, so I've got some chain pulls that hopefully, chain tugs, hopefully they'll slip in there and there'll not be too much interference from the mug guide and rack. Um, should just about have enough room on both sides, hopefully. So that should make chain adjustment a bit less of a chore. How clean is this? Top chain guide, a bit of a pain in the chuff to get off, but uh, nowhere near as bad as having to uh, pretty much strip the frame like you do on the older ones. Dutch lock, it moves about a bit and sometimes rubs, um, so it makes an annoying noise every now and then. Um, I'll keep it on for now. So uh, yeah, nice job. Remove the nuts both sides. I'll also need to pull apart the uh, rack and the mug guard stays. And then I should just be able to remove the wheel once I've uh, knocked the chain out of place. Hmm. Then I'll show you how to change the uh, Stemi Archer cog. Quite straightforward, there's a lot of videos about it out there. But uh, this is a nice clean one, not much oil down there. Hmm. Right. This bit can be a bit of a pain. As you'll see, you might be able to see that 20 tooth. Turn this around and see the gap there in the split ring that holds that in place. I need to make note there's no spacer there and that's dished inwards. And this is a fun job. Let's uh, try and get that out and up. And to let you see what I'm doing as well. All good fun. It's even more fun to put back in. It's coming. Blimey. Should have had my finger over that. Could have lost it. There we go. So that's the uh, split ring there, the cog just lifts off, just need to dip back inside and get the, uh, get the new one. I'm hoping there's not too much wind noise, it's like a wind tunnel down the back, uh, back of my house. Ah, one new in the package, Stemi Archer 22 tooth sprocket out a little bit. Now then, it really is just a case of lifting one off and putting one on. There we go. Now I've got the joyful task of fitting this back on. Now then, uh, this might cause, oops, might cause a bit of swearing. used to be able to get these on with my fingers. It's getting soft in my old age. Put you 
mean? There we go. That's it. Let's make sure that's all seated. And all in the slot. It's nice and clean actually. You should be able to see that that's uh, well seated. Oops. Practically brand new this bike. You know, But yeah, that should make a nice difference to the gearing um, overall. Just make uh, hills a little bit more of a pleasurable experience rather than a, a pain in the proverbial. Right. Ooh. Now it's time to tackle that drum brake. 17mm long. Blind me that wind. It's like living in a wind tunnel for NASA. Um, does not make a noise at night in winter. Ideally, you need someone to grip that while you're uh, tightening or, uh, or indeed loosening this. Um, I just grip the axle with an 8mm across the flats. Pretty new bike, so nice clean threads. onto a cone. There we go. So not sure if you can see that. The bit of dust on them, that's neither here nor there, but there's quite a shiny glaze to them. Um, give those a clean up with some sandpaper. And inside doesn't feel greasy but uh, I'm going to have to bust that glaze I'm also going to have to that uh, came with the main spanner that comb there so uh, just have to uh, nip that up I'll just start when I'm putting it all back together but clean those up clean inside the drum uh, I'm going to lightly sand inside the drum as well give it a little bit of a scoring just to help it bed in and then clean it with some brake cleaner had to clean my hands so I won't get any oil back on everything but uh, yeah brake and clutch cleaner it's various brands available some of them are bottled some of them are aerosol brilliant for cleaning random bits getting grease off stuff fantastic for doing what it says on the tin cleaning brakes and clutches you can also use carburetor cleaner methylated spirits or if you want to waste fine alcohol you can use vodka or gin Anyway, that's all degreased. That's just nipped up just enough, I hope. I don't fancy adjusting it later. As the brake sits, that, as it's going forward, this one, where are we? That will be a leading shoe. So, as the rotation comes this way, that's the one that's going to bite in. So, clean that up. Got rid of the glaze, hopefully you can see you might have to zoom in a little bit. There we go, got rid of the glaze on that. It all operates smoothly. Hopefully that will give me a better biting break. This is the one that we would use for adjusting that cone. It's a bit too tight, but I want it nipped up. I'm going to have to find something to hold that. I'll probably have to use some flat nose pliers because I don't have a spanner the correct size for that, a C spanner. I'll whiz this down. I think that's no it isn't. Right. I'm hoping I've not left 
left any play in there because uh, any play there will probably dry it there in and it will really annoy me and I'll have to take it off again but there's a little bit of play so I do need to uh, nip it up a bit anyway while I do that I also need to warm my hands up so I need to get a cup of tea I think Okay, so you should be able to see I've got the wheel in place. Now I've put the chain tugs on either side in board. And yeah, hopefully that will be clear enough not to interfere with the chain guard. Fingers crossed. It's worth pointing out as well that normally if you change the size of a cog, you'll have to adjust the, uh, the chain accordingly. Two tooth extra. Um, which equates to about half an inch on there and you can see where the original was it's it's gonna fit <laughs> in fact let's get the chain on so you say the chain's fully on but it's still gonna have to come back a fair old bit I'm gonna have to get these on at either side top I'm assuming means uh, away from there but uh, just with a quick look online it won't tell me what they mean by uh, by top on this whether that means towards the uh, the chain or towards the end it looks like it doesn't matter um, yeah. I'm going to guess if I put it there it's not going to interfere with that chain pull so let's get these on then uh, adjust everything up Okay, so got the uh, anti-rotation washers in place, got the chain provisionally tensioned, now I just need to get everything in its place, so uh, get the mud guard stays where they should be, that gives the uh, wheel a bit of freedom, I'm just sighting across the back need to make sure that that distance between the stays is roughly similar on both just need to pull this back a bit 10 mil oh that's like a ball string now off. Uh, we want it to move but we don't want it slapping about inside the chain guard. The chain's well lubricated. Uh, it's a reasonable amount of play. I just need to bring the left hand side in a bit should be Yeah, yeah. Each thumb just just goes between the stay and the rim. I've not done that bloody valve. Ah. Right, anyway, I can get everything else on and get it bolted up. The rack swings out of the way a little bit. Got some pivots where they're up. So that's not too bad. Get them both sides at once. and chain tension once I've got some tightness in these nuts as well
just nipping it up for now more or less right I'll probably be able to feel it if it's not when I'm riding it um, also make sure I tighten that to that wheel cone properly as well which I think I have don't fancy stripping it all down again right need to tighten everything up now Almost forgot to mention, get that brake anchor bolt tightened up before you nick this one up completely because um, you'll probably need to rotate this to line it up Once it's bolted in place you can get the cable in Give the brake a try and adjust the brake um, Nearly done Okay so that's everything tightened Both wheel nuts, brake anchor bolt Taking the opportunity of um, oiling the cable as well from above and below Start a wee bit of thin penetrating a bit of WD-40 because um, it was quite stiff, annoyingly, which won't help. Now then, to get that in there. And right. Come on. There. Alright. And they're all bolted in place. Right. Keep adjusting that. it until it nips up right that's now just starting to bind on the wheel so I've just backed it off from that point put the lock nut there Well, that should uh, that should help a bit. It's reasonably well adjusted. Can always adjust that on the fly. That's uh, pretty much almost ready to ride now. Just need to get the uh, chain case back on. Give it a wipe first, and then get it back on. The top chain case is great fun if you don't like your fingers and you want to torture them on a cold day. Um, bottom one's quite easy, but the top one's pretty stiff. You know, you really need to pull it apart and get it over the chain. Well, the brakes just slightly rubbing a little bit, but I can adjust that. Just make sure the tyre's not rubbing on anything. And. Now it's time to uh, install this. The brake adjustment and indicator. Managing it, get it, catch the thread is the uh, fun part. Right, so there we go. It's not going to go down any further than that, but that's all right. It's going to point that way. Up. 
I should forget. I think there's supposed to be a little wheel in that. I might have to see if I can find another one, but uh, let's face it, Sturmy Archer worked for years without these. It keeps a bit of uh, nastiness out, and it's fine. In the way of the camera. Pointing in the right direction. Right. This is further this way, so this is going to come a lot more. I might have to uh, might be alright. Well, because this has changed position, because I've added effectively an extra washer with the um, chain pulls, chain tensioners, I should be able to see down there a bit better for adjusting it. That's quite loose there. Still might have to just nip up the cable a little bit on that, so getting quite close to that. Lock nut. Right, that's loose. So that should be fifth. Four, three, two. See if I can see that yellow. second now when I get it right up to uh, my adjuster I'm going to have to pull this through a little bit more to move that back only about a quarter of an inch so there we have it that's uh, now adjusted so when it's in second the yellow is just showing in there no doubts, they're a bit finicky these 5 speed hubs um, compared to the 3 speed so when I'm out and about next time I go for a ride I'll just have to adjust that on the fly basically to make use of the um, the stand that uh, lifts the back wheel off the ground all the gears seem to be going in now absolutely fine but when they're under a bit of strain from, uh, from me pressing on the pedals and going up hills and whatnot then uh, that could be very different there we go front brake works quite well now light not really used it that much but uh, it works as does the hoin and the bell ding dong honk honk So hopefully now we'll have a better rear brake and yeah, nicer running gears for going uphill. Okay, just got back from a test ride. Gears are all indexing perfectly. Uh, no problem there. It feels, yeah, I like the gearing now. It's really nice. Um, against the headwind, no problem. Using fourth a lot more. Um, the seat I've adjusted upwards slightly at the front and just raised it a tad. Um, just to check for the comfort on that back brake <laughs> to be honest no real difference but it's no worse so hopefully now it's all scuffed up a little bit inside it should bed in a little bit quicker and uh, hopefully start to bite a little bit like the front one's doing I'm generally using the front for most of my braking at the moment um, the back won't slow me down down a hill because it's, uh, it's that bad but hopefully it will get better now 
um, the grips, the GP1 grips. Done a couple of hundred miles and uh, yeah, the rubber bit is no longer slippery, although it might be the colder weather. Of course, we just had the uh, the winter full moon, um, the old uh, traditional Anglo-Saxon break between summer and winter. Um, but yeah, that's riding really well now. Just in time for me to um, probably end up shelving it and using another bike for winter. Oh well. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you haven't already, please press like and subscribe for more of the same. See you next time.